In Winnipeg, it's way more fun for us to cross the city using only its back lanes. The city possesses a vast network of these unofficial streets, a fine grid-like work of narrow, unspoken of byways that hold a charm all of their own. They're not even allowed on city maps, but the populace knows all about them and uses them more than legitimate streets. A dispute between the city's two main taxi companies was settled by giving one company the rights to use the regular streets, while the other company must pick up and drop off its fares only in the back lanes. It's inside these black arteries where the real Winnipeg is found, where memories most plausibly come alive. The network of these lanes suggests the grid of a secret city laid right on top of the known one, Lanes with names remembered only by word of mouth lie on top of streets named after politicians and land developers. The lanes are illicit things, best not discussed, shameful. They receive the breach ends of the houses, the side of the home not meant for polite company. They are the weedy landscapes of shameful abandonment, the conduits of refuse removal. Here we strew what we no longer want to acknowledge, and everything most notably, the Winnipeg Special, a mattress bent over with fatal stains, is quickly covered up by the forgetfulness of our snow. In the alleyways, strange wavelengths dominate. The dispatcher seems to speak directly to you. Yes, I got that this morning. The driving is softer, soft as a cushion. A white pillow plumped. Then there's the strange case of Lorette, a hermaphrodite street. It's half front street, half back lane. No one speaks of Lorette. <laughs> 